Hi everyone, this is David Pike, Connector Geek. I'm here again with Molex to talk about the AEC product and the advantages it brings to data center managers in terms of their infrastructure. In the last podcast, we talked about the technology itself, how it's been developed and, and what it looks like and what it does. Active electrical cables are AEC. This time, I'd like to learn a little bit more about the performance of AECs and why managers would want to choose that product over maybe some of the older solutions, DAC being one of the, the terminology that, that we've heard a lot. I'm here again with uh, Chris and Vivek from Molex. Hi, chaps. Hey, David. Hey, David. Hello, and hopefully they're going to be able to answer some of these questions and give us a greater understanding of where the AEC will fit in existing infrastructure and where it might fit in future developments. What are the key benefits that AECs are going to provide to system architects and to developers? Yeah, David, this is Chris. I'll, I'll jump in on that. There are a multitude of benefits uh, that an AEC offers. Uh, number one, the first and foremost, is longer reach, greater reach. As we start talking about moving towards these faster speeds, 112 gig, even 224, traditional uh, sorts of way of architecting are really being challenged. That's both within a rack system as well as even between racks. So at the most fundamental kind of level, these sort of AEC retimed cables enable greater reach, two and a half, three five, even up to seven meters, depending upon uh, the twin X that, uh, that is deployed within the cable. Okay, so we've talked about these solutions and I, I mentioned a, a term that I've read, uh, the DAC DAC as being another solution. What are those other solutions that are available? What is AEC potentially replacing? Hi, um, this is Vivek. Let me answer that question. The way I look at AEC is it's not always replacing <clears throat> something, it can coexist. So with DAC, our DAC and AC, both are the uh, options that a design uh, architect can, a data center architect can de uh, decide to use based on the, the requirements. And in, within the same chassis, they can use uh, DAC as well as AEC, uh, depending on where the top of the rack uh, switch needs to connect to what server. If it's going all the way to the bottom for three meter, then maybe it's better to use AEC versus the passive deck. But one of the things that it's helping in doing that, and the AEC is helping filling uh, the, the need is for these architects not to uh, have to go to an active optical cables. So in a way, they don't have to, use, they can stay with the copper domain and not have to use an optical cables uh, by using AEC as well as deck. Okay, now that's really interesting because optical is certainly. I remember being in in meetings years and years ago where uh, experts of the time were suggesting that we'd got to the limit of how copper could perform in terms of speed, and this is back when we were talking about 100 megabits a second. People standing up and saying oh, we're not going to be able to get any further without going towards optical systems, and it's it's fascinating to see that we are we are now talking about these rocket ship speeds, 112 gigabits a second, even 224, and we're still deploying this over a copper solution. That's correct, isn't it? Yes. Okay, that's really interesting because it means that it, customers can avoid having to go down, whether it's the expense or the learning curve or the change in installation procedures to go with, with optical systems. So that's really interesting. I'm guessing that there are other pros and cons for AECs and DACs. We've talked about the fact that AEC is an active solution, whereas DAC is a passive solution. Is that one of the, one of the major things to differentiate the two? Yes, the AEC is an active solution, DAC is a passive, so that's definitely one of the major differences between the two. The power requirement is um, also different between them, right? The DAC is passive, doesn't require much or very little power from the system versus AEC do, does require a, a certain amount of power to get to that higher, longer reach and, and performance. And that's that's an interest raises an interesting question because we talked in the last podcast about the fact that the AEC using standard form factor connectors means that it's backwards compatible. But does that mean that it's an easy changeover? Can a can a customer simply remove a passive cable and, and install an active one, or is there additional work that needs to be done to do to make it work? Yes, absolutely. So a customer can use a passive deck or an AEC almost seamlessly 
uh, between the two. That's really powerful for customers to be able to uh, to be able to switch between the two, I, I guess, according to their needs. So we've talked about reach, about the fact that the the active cable can go that much further compared to the, the passive DAC cable. And I'm guessing that, that that will allow the customer to configure on the fly almost. Is that something that's going to be enabling data centers to change their architecture almost day by day or hour by hour? Is that possible? Yeah, I'm not sure I would go hour by hour or day by day, but yes, absolutely. Um, it is one of the reasons to come back to, to one of the points that Vivek made was really see AECs complementing DAC cables. So you're right, David, that a copper is still very much alive and kicking at these higher speeds, and it still remains a fundamental element in terms of the construction of the data center. Uh, we basically advocate that if you're able to utilize such a passive solution uh, in terms of these uh, direct attached copper cables, these DACs, uh, then that is really going to be your best solution from a cost sort of perspective, from a lowest latency sort of perspective. But again, the reality of these higher and faster data speeds means that those traditional types of cables are not going to be able to give you the same sort of reach. So there needs to be a middle ground between where do I transition from those sort of passive copper cables um, before I have to employ a more costly or expensive optical solution. And that's really where the sweet spot for these AEC cables are. They get you back to those two and a half, three meter, and even potentially longer lengths um, without that whole additional cost associated with the optics. At the same time, while they do consume more power than that of a traditional DAC cable, they are less power hungry than that of the optics. So it's really kind of a, a nice, again, kind of middle ground that these AECs are slotted into as the speeds of the data center grow and the DAC reaches kind of rescind a little bit or retreat a little bit. These AECs are an excellent opportunity to kind of fill that gap and an excellent cost compared to that of the optical solutions. So I'm taking that away as one of the, the key features of this. We're not, we're not advocating that data centers go away from their traditional passive cables wholesale. We're not advocating that they ignore the power that optical systems can provide, especially if we're talking about, uh, I guess if we're talking about longer reaches, we're, we're talking about large, large distances. There is still very much a place for optical systems. There yeah. is still very much a place for passive systems, but there is this gap that AEC is clearly filling to provide those higher speeds over that slightly bigger distance. Spot on. Fantastic. We talked a little bit about thermal uh, and certainly in the last podcast we were talking about the, the thermal advantages of AEC because it uses a, a thinner twin axe which gives you all sorts of uh, mechanical and thermal advantages in terms of routing, in terms of uh, the, the heat. Is that an improvement over the DAC? Is the, is the DAC getting to the point where it is creating too much heat? Would that be a situation where you go with AEC as well? Yeah, I wouldn't say that the DAC is creating too much heat so much as the air impedance uh, does become significant. At these faster speeds, we've grown the size of the DAC cable, essentially the, you know, the cross-sectional diameter of this as we've looked to employ you know, 26, even in some situations, 25 gauge twin X. So when you begin to put that sort of cable bundle mass in front of your system, it can have a detriment in terms of the overall airflow passing over those cables through the IO and ultimately through the chassis itself. With these AECs, the ability to go to a smaller cable bundle, we reduce that sort of air impedance and therefore enable a greater amount of airflow at the same fan curve through the chassis uh, to obtain better cooling. So that the DACs aren't creating more heat, but the the AEC being smaller is simply making it easier to manage that heat. Spot on, exactly. Fantastic. This has been really interesting for me to understand. In my simple view, I was thinking that AECs are 
good um, and we need to ignore the old passive solutions. And uh, again, I, I'm similar in many ways to a lot of engineers probably who are a little bit scared of optical solutions. So there was part of me thinking that AECs represent the, the way forward to avoid these other things. What, what I'm taking away very much from, from the conversation today is that there are a number of different solutions that will provide data center managers with the tools they need to get their system performing with a combination of the cost, the performance in terms of the signal speeds, the management problems they have in terms of cable routing and in terms of thermal management. So for me, the, the key takeaway from this is that AECs represent a, an interesting middle ground between existing passive cables that will continue to be used uh, for many years to come, I'm sure, and the optical solutions that do provide maybe the longer range that we need, but aren't necessarily needed for these two and a half, three, five meter, even seven meter reaches. If these can be performed with copper, then the AEC is a product that actually lets you do that. In the next and our last podcast on these subjects, we're going to be looking more about data center managers and how they can maximize their rack space efficiency using this kind of technology and how this can actually help them to make their systems easier to manage, both from, from the mechanical, from the, the routing point of view, the thermal point of view, and keeping the performance up. So Chris, Vivek, thank you so much for joining me. I've learned an awful lot about these products. I look forward to speaking to you again soon. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Vivek. Thank you, David. Thank you, David. Thank you, everyone, for listening, and we'll speak to you again soon.